Hey guys, it's Nurse Mike here with SimpleNursing.com. Today we're tackling vasopressors, talking epinephrine, norepi, vasopressin, and more, including all the tips and tricks to help you stay sharp with all the top-tested info that loves to show up on the NCLEX. And as usual, all my Simple Nursing members, be sure to grab both your study guides on this topic in your membership area. Now let's dive in and pump it up. For vasopressors, think that they press on the vessels, causing the blood vessel pressure to go up, increasing the blood pressure. In order to squeeze oxygen-rich blood back to the core of the body, in order to perfuse the vital organs. Sort of like squeezing a tube of toothpaste, all the vessels are pressed down, so that blood squeezes back to the heart. Now the main vasopressors to know is epinephrine, norepinephrine, vasopressin, dobutamine, and dopamine. We will cover these in a moment. The main indication here is simple. We give it to increase the blood pressure when it's low. For cardiac arrest, or the ACLS type settings, and even shock where we have severely low blood pressure and decreased perfusion. So just think, vasopressors press up the blood pressure by pressing on the blood vessels. They work specifically by activating some key receptors, so write it down, alphas and betas, inside the heart and the lining of the blood vessels. Once the alphas and betas are stimulated, they do different things. So alpha-1 is responsible for constriction of the blood vessels. So just think alphas are the anacondas that act on the vessels to constrict and narrow them so that blood squeezes back to the heart. And when you hear the term alpha agonist, think agonist adds to the blood pressure, increasing it with our vasopressors. And on the other side of things, alpha antagonist are anti-blood pressure. So they basically block the blood pressure, lowering it, like with clonidine, which blocks the alpha receptors, which blocks the anaconda constriction, so vessels naturally dilate now with clonidine. So less constriction, we have less pressure with clonidine, and naturally, blood pressure goes down. So the memory trick, blood pressure declines with clonidine. Or just think cardiac down with clonidown. Now the good news is the blood pressure is lowered, but the bad news is it can work too well and lower too much, causing orthostatic hypotension, that low blood pressure upon standing. Now switching to betas, for beta 1, think one heart. For a beta agonist, we have our vasopressors. So we get a faster heart rate, which is positive chronotropic. Chronos meaning time, so more beats per minute. And a stronger heart rate, known as positive inotropic. Ino meaning force, so more forceful beats. And we have increased cardiac output, meaning an increase in blood coming out of the heart, positive inotropic. And increased heart rate, so positive chronotropic. Now for beta antagonists, we have anti-beats, like our beta blockers ending in LOL, like propanolol. They block beats here, so we have negative chronos, which means less beats, and negative inotropic, which means less force, ending up with lower heart rate and blood pressure. Now for beta 2, we have two lungs here, so think of the dilation of vessels and bronchi. We call beta 2 the beach ball effect because a beta-2 agonist is our vasopressors and even albuterol, opening up the vessels and lungs like a big stretched out balloon, or basically like a beach ball. Now the good news is that the lungs can get more oxygen and the dilated vessels means that organs get perfused. But the bad news here is with this dilation, we can have a blood pressure that drops, leading to lower hypotension when given in high doses, like with vasopressors. Now, this is not typical with albuterol. So once again, just think beta-2 dilates the vessels and the bronchi like a big beach ball. Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. Now for the big vasopressor drugs. The ones to know for your test and the NCLEX, I would write these down, we have epinephrine, norepinephrine, vasopressin, dobutamine, and dopamine. So let's break these down one by one. Starting with some memory tricks first. 
So epinephrine and norepinephrine both have the name epinephrine in it. So just think epi elevates the blood pressure by activating the alpha receptors to get that anaconda constriction of the blood vessel, forcing the blood pressure up. And vasopressin just sounds like pressin, so it presses the blood pressure up. It's a synthetic ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. That does not affect the alphas and the betas. ADH, in essence, adds the H2O to the body, increasing fluid in the body to increase the blood pressure, to basically press up the BP with vasopressin. Now, the last two Ds are dobutamine and dopamine, given for a deeper contraction. And they have some major properties, so the key terms think inotropic, increasing the force of contraction. So the key terms, they increase contractility with inotropic, and they increase forceful contraction, meaning we get a more forceful, deep contraction with the two Ds. Okay, now that we know the memory tricks, let's go into each one in a little more detail. So epinephrine, brand name adrenaline, and norepinephrine, brand name levofed, or leave them dead. That's a little saying we have in the hospital, because levofed, or norepinephrine, is one of the last line drugs to keep a patient alive. Now, these two are given for severely low blood pressure, like septic shock, to increase the blood pressure. Since both act on alpha-1 receptors to provide constriction, so again, think alpha receptors are that anaconda constriction to increase the blood pressure. Now, both have the word epi in them. So remember, epi elevates the BP to save lives. Now, the big key difference here is that epinephrine is first primary drug in cardiac arrest when we get a loss of electrical activity and the heart stops pumping, like in asystole and PEA, pulseless electrical activity. So we give epi first to initiate heart contractions, aka heart pumping. So Hesse mentions, epinephrine initiates heart contraction during cardiac arrest. So remember, once again, epi is our first line drug here. Again, think epi elevates the BP. And Kaplan mentions, epinephrine treatment is effective if the vital signs are up. So a blood pressure of 130 over 67, an apical of 99, and a cap refill less than two seconds. Yes, these vital signs indicate that epi is doing its job to elevate the blood pressure and the vital signs. Now, epi is also used as a first-line drug in anaphylaxis, or our supersized allergic reaction. We typically use it in an auto-injector called an EpiPen, which we cover in the Pharmacology Master Course at SimpleNursing.com. Lastly, Hesse mentions an interesting drug, phentolamine. This one is used to treat dopamine and epinephrine extravasation. It's basically if the IV gets dislodged from the vein and leaks into the tissues. So epi and dopamine can cause major damage to the surrounding tissues, like burning and blistering from all that vasoconstriction. So if this happens, we always keep the IV in place and give phentolamine immediately. Get a full breakdown of what you need to pass the NCLEX with our NCLEX review lecture series and live cram sessions led by myself and industry experts. Now our next drug is vasopressin and desmopressin, our ADH. So both of these have pressin, so just think they press that blood pressure up. These are the synthetic version or man-made version of the natural hormone ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, which adds fluid to the body by making you stop urinating. So just think ADH adds the H2O for more fluid in the body so we get higher blood pressure. Now, for the specific reason, it's given for DI, diabetes insipidus, where we have a lack of ADH, and the patient ends up diuresing or draining a lot of fluid. In DI, we diurese, or basically pee a lot. So be careful. Don't get tricked with SIADH, where we stop urinating. Simply look at the letters here. SIADH has a lot more letters, so we retain a lot more fluid. And DI has very few letters, so very little fluid is retained. Or just think S in SIADH, we stop urinating. 
and end up with a swollen body that is soaked inside with SI, and we get low liquidy labs. And with DI, we diurese or drain the fluid, and so we really get dry inside with DI, with high and dry lab values. Okay, now that was a big side note, but this is one of the main reasons why desmopressin is given. Now the key difference is that vasopressin does not affect the alphas and the betas. It affects the fluid volume and not the constriction of blood vessels. So let the name help you here. Antidiuretic means antidiuresing, or stop urinating. Or again, just think ADH, adds the H2O, more fluid in the body and not in the potty. Now lastly, dobutamine and dopamine, both mainly used to treat cardiogenic shock where we have a failed heart pump. This means that the heart can no longer pump out oxygen-rich blood to the body. So we get low cardiac output, meaning low blood out of the heart and into the body. So we need a deeper contraction here to increase that blood out of the heart and to the body. So think of the two Ds for a deep contraction, D for dobutamine and D for dopamine. Both mainly activate alpha-1 receptors, causing anaconda-like constriction to the blood vessels to increase the BP. And they activate beta-1 receptors, remember beta-1 for one heart, to increase contractility, resulting in a more forceful contraction, known as positive inotropic. Increase force with a deep contraction. And once again, the memory trick, think inotropic, increases cardiac contractility and increases the forceful contraction, meaning we get a more forceful deep contraction with the two Ds. So Hesse mentions, dopamine activates alpha-1 and beta-1 receptors. And the therapeutic effects here is low doses act on dopamine receptors, moderate doses act on beta-1 receptors, and high doses act on both alpha-1 and beta-1 receptors. And we always assess the IV site hourly for signs and symptoms of infiltration. And Kaplan mentions dopamine given for a patient with hypotension what indicates effectiveness? And the answer is increased cardiac output. And ATI mentions dobutamine and dopamine. Assess the blood pressure hourly and monitor the vital signs. Now a little side note here to wrap it up. There's a debate on renal perfusion to help give blood flow to the kidneys with low dose dopamine. But that has recently been debunked and is no longer supported. So. I wouldn't focus on that too much. Now lastly, to help you with your pharmacology nursing exams, use this chart if you need to visualize the properties for the top vasopressors. Now a caution, this chart is a nice to know for the NCLEX and not a need to know. So I wouldn't waste your precious time focusing on this chart. Rather, focus on the key points that we just covered and you'll be good to go for the NCLEX. Again, this chart is super helpful for pharmacology exams, but that's really about it. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.